and absolutely amazing. Good morning to you. We're glad that you've joined us. This is Hashtag Goa in the Morning, and I'm Brian Sakua. This is the 19th day of December. Definitely, the holiday mood is finally here, and a Merry Christmas to you. Not a Happy New Year yet, but also I can say it in advance, okay? As always, you can find a way to interact with us on our socials, and that includes X, uh, Facebook, and Instagram, at Y244 channel. And uh, the hashtag to use to interact with us is hashtag Y in the morning. And mine's, uh, that means my socials, is at Brian Sokka 101. Uh, today, being a Tuesday, it's all about health and entrepreneurship. So definitely, I'm going to be taking you through um, a news, the newspaper daily. Today, I have a copy of uh, the People Daily newspaper. And it has interesting stories and updates for you. The splash, once again. Journalism 101, uh, the head headline or the highlight of uh, the newspaper is it has been revealed that the big fight for Form 1 slots. It's also a day when over 40,000 students, KCPE students, have finally uh, been selected to join uh, their favorite high schools. Are they joining their favorite high schools? That's the question as well. But then uh, there's an interesting update on that that shows uh, schools overwhelmed, and this includes selection exposes uh, the yawning gaps in quality of schools as KCPE candidates scramble for places in the national institutions. Uh, on, on that also include counties lacking enough classrooms, uh, spill to neighboring ones, and then slum children. Get some relief, uh, the story is on page number four. On top of that, uh, it talks about uh, Uhuru denouncing the DRC military pact. And then uh, next to it is the Kenya-EU signed trade agreement. And the deal is expected to boost local manufacturing and enterprise as European Union also gets access to the regional bloc. Down there, they're saying as the facilitator, that is uh, a comment from the former president, Uhuru Kenyatta, says that he repudiates these developments, particularly their military character and their accompanying political charge and provocative rhetoric. And then down there, uh, the education CS, uh, that is Ezekiel Machogu, says a specific issue, this is in regards to yesterday's KCPA results, it says a specific issue is worthy of the mention and some candidates, despite having high scores, did not make any school choices. And then down below, they are talking about uh, some of the schools that are actually being fought for. I think I saw it on the copy of the Daily Nation newspaper where it talks about some of the most fought for high schools. And uh, it includes, they've listed several. I wonder why Alliance is at the bottom, but it says Kabianga High School that re has a capacity of 672, but applicants were 186,357. Followed by Nanyuki High School that has a capacity of 480, but the applicants were 1,500, rather 158,741. Followed by Pangani Girls with a capacity of 384. The applicants were 144,542. There's Capsabit Boys, Alliance Girls, Maseno School, Nakuru High, Butere Girls, uh, Mangu High, and then Alliance I believe it should be Alliance Boys, okay? Because uh, the fifth one on the list is Alliance Girls, and then there's Alliance High with uh, 384 capacity, and then uh, applicants were 110,839. This is in regards to yesterday's uh, selection of uh, Form 1, a uh, high, yes, Form 1, and then my KCP candidates joining Form 1 right there. And if you're a parent back at home, did your child get his or her favorite high school, please? tell us uh, if they got it or not. And maybe what are some of the issues, especially the discrepancies and the uh, inconsistencies that came through. Of course, we had uh, previously uh, primary schools that did not get the best results and they had to file for a petition for them to maybe remarked, which they said was not a good thing. But then also there's those who received wrong marks and wrong units or wrong subjects in the Instead of what they sought for, they got something else. Now, uh, in January uh, 15th, uh, the day when the learners are also expected to uh, join uh, the high school or report to Form 1 in their schools, this is that marked day. Uh, a total of 42,927 candidates who were selected to join the national schools and uh, 22,051 boys, while 20,876 are girls. Still, the gentlemen or the boys are leading. Now the total number is 3,500. This is the number of classrooms to be built in Nairobi schools to reduce shortage of places. 
And uh, when I look here, I've not seen Nairobi School, which is among, should be among, anyways. So, so we'll talk about that later on. But uh, on top of that, uh, they're talking about Ruto, Ruto's rule, President Ruto's rule on internships. Uh, the beneficiaries must serve for two years, he says, and the president in answer to teacher unions. The story is on page number six. And then there's an interesting update here. Of course, it's all about the festive season and the costly, careless driving. This is in results to the road carnages that we are being experienced in the country right now. I think as of yesterday, I was checking an update where they said this year from January till right now, which is end of the year, December, a total, an estimation of around 3,999 accidents have been recorded in short road carnages and close to 4,000 died on Kenyan roads in one year. This according to Cabinet Secretary uh, Roads and Infrastructure, that is uh, Kipchumba Mukomren. The story is on page number three of the People Daily, and I'm going to take you through it very, 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 very fast. And as always, uh, open to hear and see your feedback. All right, uh, let, let's, talk, let's, let's get deeper into it. It talks about uh, the story on the road carnages now that it's the festive season. It says um, this is because of high numbers of people traveling to upcountry or Ushago, if you want to. It talks about transport. CS Cabinet Secretary Kichumba Mokomen has cited uh, drunk driving, use of mobile phones by both motorists and cyclists and other form of distractions as some of the reasons that have led to the increase in road accidents. And the CS also said uh, and also called upon uh, motorists and other road users to change and unsafe road users' behaviors that endanger lives. So he's basically called upon you to uh, be cautious, especially at a time like this. And those that, you know, are boarding buses, matatus, or cabs that are already fully loaded, please don't do it. And then don't drink and drive. He pointed out a total of 3,999 lives were lost as a result of road accidents between January 1st and December 7th, down from 4,352 people who died in similar circumstances during the same period last year. This is according to uh, the official data. Uh, Transport Cabinet Secretary, uh, that is Mchumba Mkumen, also uh, said that there was little to celebrate because the number of serious injuries increased from 8,974 to 9,698. When he spoke yesterday during the Kenya's Highway Code and Driver's Handbook, he said slight injuries have also increased from 6,497 to 6,971. According to him, the increase in the pedal cyclist death can be attributed to speeding vehicles, uh, dangerous cycling, and safe changing of lanes and lack of motorist transport, NMT facilities on our roads, okay? All right, uh, down there, he talks about the new rules that will be implemented, especially during this festive season. It takes into consideration uh, the new rules and guidelines for driving in East Africa, as well as the international standards for safe driving. Uh, the safety is guaranteed to us if we understand and internalize these guidelines and elsewhere. As well, four people died yesterday in a road accident involving an Nakuru bound Matatu and a bus on Eldred Nakuru Road. The Matatu belonged to Ms. Maria Shuttle, which was heading to Nakuru with 16 passengers on board, and is said to have lost control and rammed into the 60-seater bus. The dead included the Matatu's driver and uh, three passengers. Nine other passengers sustained serious injuries and were rushed to Eldama Ravine Sub-County Referral Hospital, where they're currently receiving treatment. It's just a cautionary tale again, and take precaution. Don't drink and drive like they've highlighted here. Don't board an overloaded matatu, cab, or bus. And then also do not um, switch lanes. You know, that happens a lot on thicker road. I don't know if <laughs> at some point you've been <laughs> on those sides of the, of the highway. Uh, somebody just swaps a lane without indication. And, you know, it's, it's, a, busy, it's a busy highway anyways. So please do not drink and drive and observe traffic rules, okay? Now, uh, let's talk about uh, the story, current story of the day. That is uh, the big scramble for Form 1 places in select schools. And I had highlighted this to you. It includes some 288,201 candidates that have been placed in county schools. Uh, 274,746 students will join extra county schools. Of these, 141,591, 590 are boys and 133, 156 are girls. Still boys leading. Okay. 
And then the overall 42,927 students who sat this year's KCPE were placed in national schools. Out of this, 22,051 are boys and 20,876 are girls. Kabianga and Nanyuki High are the most preferred secondary schools among pupils who sat class 8 examinations this year, right? Right. This came when the Education Cabinet Secretary Zekar Machogu announced that the competition of the Form 1 selection in Nairobi yesterday. This is because learners will be expected to join their respective schools in January 15th of 2024. According to Machogu, that is the Cabinet Secretary of Education, he says 186,357 can candidates rather selected Kabianga as their first choice, yet it had a capacity of only seven, 672 students. Now you could the capacity of 180 learners which also received a, a number of applications that included 158,741 followed by Pangani Girls which is the third most sought after school. It received a total of 144,000 542 applicants yet it's only able to absorb only 384 meaning that they'll, they'll not be able to take in all of those and i'm pretty sure there's those that got disappointed i also wonder why kabianga high school <laughs> Um, pff, yeah, okay. Last exams through affirmation action, the ministry placed 130 learners in national and 167 in extra county schools with 150 of the beneficiaries being girls and 147 boys, okay. Uh, besides the affirmative action on needy and vulnerable children, the placement also considered the 217 Djibouti December Declaration on Regional Refugee Education and placed learners from primary schools and refugee camps. This year, the number of KCP candidates rose by 180,000 to hit a historic high of 1.41 million. Assange attributed to the fact that this was the last class under the 844 system. By the way, it's also the end of an era. And that meant this year offered the last chance for all those who wanted to see the KCP examinations to do so. Okay? So meaning it, it's also an end of an era. Goodbye to the other education system. And hello, welcome to the CBC. And now the joining instructions are as follows. During the selection, uh, principals would pick candidates manually under the guidance of education officers and then generate lists for their respective schools, then prepare joining instructions for onward transmission to primary schools where the candidates collected them. The first computerized placement of the KCP candidates at the national level was carried out in 2006 and uh, progressively extended to extra county and county schools by 2016 to sub-county level by 2020. That's when just uh, COVID was coming in and a lot of you definitely first the wrath of the pandemic, but it's now a story of the past. The oldest gone, the new has come. Now let's talk about interns. Uh, the story is on page number six. Interns to work for two years ahead of state jobs. And this means those that applied for government jobs. I believe so. Pro probably also in government parastatals and many other government institutions. Uh, the president, president's word on that is he has affirmed that interns must only take two years before being absorbed on permanent and pensionable term. I think this again also uh, was highlighted by the teachers' service commissions for teachers that had applied for jobs that had temporary contracts. You know, you can be employed on contract, but it's not permanent. It means when your contract is done after two years or two months or six, depending on the institution or depending on the type of the contract, it's done, you go. But uh, the teachers wanted for them to be, to have contracts, but permanent ones. So, and also pensionable, not just permanent, but pensionable as well, meaning you're benefiting, okay? And uh, he said uh, that the government policy that will be adopted in all sectors, not only for the teaching profession, even as he assured the junior secondary teachers that their contracts will continue in January. Of course, there's those that their contracts had come to a close, but then they'll have to re-continue in 2024. Uh, the JSS teachers have been demanding that they be absorbed on a permanent and pensionable basis as their unions called for their restraint. Okay, right. Uh, they're talking about once they com complete their internships uh, after two years, as the president assured, they want to be retained, not to be sent home. And now that it's a very tough economy and separately, the education cabinet secretary talked about it and said that uh, so, um, the government has employed at least 50 over, in fact, over 56,000 teachers so far. And out of this, he said some have been employed in the junior schools and also retooled 
those who are in ex ex existing primary schools and also on peda pedagogical skills, that word. Is it pedagogical or pedagogical? Please, you can shout me out. English classes 101 pronunciation, okay? He added that they've been also able to absorb quite a number of them and progressively go to another year. Yeah. Then they also remain that JCC teachers who are on internships because of the criteria of employment is now that you must start as an intern in order for you to be able to qualify for permanent and punishable. I believe starting, yes, for starters, but not for, I think, I believe it's starters, intermediary, immediate, and then, oh, this amateur. Uh, you can tell me, you can help out Apple, all right? So, so let's talk about matters DRC before we get to the entrepreneurship page. It talks about oh, President Uhuru hitting, former President Uhuru hitting out at DRC Opposition Alliance. And uh, he talked about the DRC polls. And this includes um, former head of Congress Electoral Commission, Kanel Nanga, now an opposition leader announced during the meeting that the formation of a military alliance dubbed Alliance du Flevo Congo, all right, uh, Eastern DRC bordering Rwanda, where over 120 armed groups are in control, leading to up to 3.8 million residents who are living. Okay, and then immediate former, uh, right, that, that is the former president. He talked about uh, the Electoral Commission. Yeah, Kenyatta is also a facilitator of the East African community, led the Nairobi Peace Progress for DRC condemning. He also condemned the formation of the Nanga led alliance, saying it is a threat to uh, the country's stability. And according to Nanga, who is now the leader of opposition, uh, he talks about uh, a move to save DRC, noting that there's need for the political, social, and military forces to unite in bid to rebuild and restore peace in the country, which has endured decades of political strife uh, characterized by the civil war. The situation is now worse in the eastern DRC, bordering Rwanda, where over 120 groups are in control, leading to 3.8 million residents living as internally displaced persons right that's just uh that on uh, matters stories that are breaking headlines now we have to shift to the entrepreneurship page but as i do that please uh tell us wh what are some of the stories that right caught your attention especially when it comes to what is making headlines in our country right now i don't know if you caught the update yesterday where the pope uh has, uh, is it Pope Francis? Is it the second or the third or the fourth? I'm not telling you as a quote the 20th or the 1,000th, please tell me. He finally uh, signed uh, a bill. Is it a bill, a proposal that suggests that now same-sex marriage will be accepted? At the, actually, the move comes from the Vatican, but of course the Vatican is like the head of all Catholic churches. So they definitely it's going to be a battle whether same-sex marriage should be blessed in church or it's, I don't know the next word. Because <laughs> here in Africa, I don't know if we can hear that, but you can tell, you can tell us. I saw, this, I saw CNN and BBC reacting to that, including Fox News and the rest, including Sky News as well, some of the, inter and Al Jazeera, including other international media platforms that had a lot of sentiments and echo on that. Tell us, do you agree with the Pope's move to sign a petition that will allow the blessing of same-sex marriage in church, especially now the Catholic space, right? Talk to us and let us know. Now, on Matters Business and Entrepreneurship page, on page number 15 of the People Daily Newspapers, uh, President Ruto is determined to sell state farms. And uh, this again includes uh, some of the buildings that were highlighted to be sold, including KICC, the legendary, <laughs> which is a landmark of Kenya, all right? Uh, the KICC, including, uh, is it Kenya Pipeline? Uh, Kenya Creameries, and then uh, even including uh, the Moya Rice, Rice uh, facility as well. And it had a lot of uh, feedback and a lot of reaction from the netizens. But, it talks about uh, the Kenya pipeline can make up to around 30 billion Kenyan shillings in profit if Retaniate is only making around you know, 5 billion, which is insignificantly, and the returns are computed at the rate of 10% net value. This has repeat, this repeated as the season why the government is keen to sell such firms to large investors who will have to bid in on the process. And of course, a lot of people fought it. And in the joint media address, he said it's in bid to just serve the country's economy because some of these buildings are not serving much in terms of their profit. You can see he's alighted here. 
that Kenya Pipeline can give a profit of 30 billion, but it's only giving 5 billion. So I don't know what you think about that. Please let us know in that comment section at uh, Y244 channel. He says he's looking at saving about 60 to 70 billion of the 250 billion spent on running the farms and plow back to cash the infrastructural development projects such as healthcare, roads, education, or housing, among others. I remember when he was asked about uh, the G2G deal, and he said if it didn't happen, probably the dollar would be 250, uh, dollar exchange rate to Kenya would be 250 Kenya shillings. And then also he pointed out the economy right now is on the road to goodness. So uh, he estimated it to be at 5.6% the growth of the economy right now and also recovery. Meaning uh, we are not at a bad place, we are on recovery. And he finally said that we are certainly out of debt. I remember the previous government had a, uh, an estimation of up to 9.5 when they came in and his money to clear, right? We are yet to see what amount has been cleared, but definitely they'll update us as we go by. This is 2023 ending, 2024 Karibu Sana. Right, he talked about uh, reassuring Kenyans that he means well for the state-run farms and he only wants to make them more vibrant and uh, profitable. And opening doors, he said, the intention is to commercialize KICC, that is the legendary KICC, and make it profitable, not a place of tourists taking pictures the way it has been uh, famed over the years. Do tourists come to take pictures at KICC? Or it's even us? Maybe domestic, <laughs> domestic tourists, not international. I really doubt if, uh, all right. Uh, on Postbank, Ruto disclosed that uh, each day when it opens its doors, it loses 3 million Kenya shillings and wondered why an option close would save more losses running close to 1 billion a year. It's not the way to go. That's according to the president's uh, sentiments. And I definitely know you'd agree or disagree. Please let us know. Now, down below, they're talking about the Auditor General putting Treasury on the spot over the 16 billion Kenya shillings loan to our national carrier, KQ. This is a part uh, of a grand plan to navigate the airline back to profitability. The government has even set a deadline to end the bailout support by KQ by December 2023. This is just this month about to end. The damning, the damning information is contained in the special audit report by the OAG on the supplementary budget expenditure and withdrawals under Article 223 of the Constitution of Kenya 2010. On April this year, on 26, the Public Accounts Committee of the National Assembly in a letter asked the Auditor General to conduct a special audit to scrutinize all expenditure made under Article 2223 of the Constitution during the financial year 2023, 2022 rather, 2023. The letter revealed that the national government had spent a total of 130 billion Kenya shillings attributed to various initiatives including fuel stabilization, subsidies for flour and fertilizer, provision for relief food and enhanced security operations, right? And the National Treasury also dispensed a shareholder loan amounting to 16.3 billion Kenya shillings to Kenya Airways during the financial year 2021, 2022, and 2022-2023 without a valid loan agreement. That's according to a new report by the Office of Auditor General that revealed those details right there. Okay, uh, I don't know if you remember, of late we, we've, we've been experiencing a lot of hiccups at uh, the JKIA. I remember last week there was a plan that, I was actually following the plan on the GPS. There's a plan that took off at around 9 p.m. And then uh, it, it had, it had uh, I think when, when, it, when it went airborne, it, com it uh, developed uh, mechanical issues and they, it was actually heading to Dubai. And they had to use the Mandera route and they had to come back again to around at the river. They rotated around at the river for like 40 minutes just to, you know, they call it, um, what, the, the, there's a word in aviation, uh, it's, it's running out of my head. What do we call fuel? Yes, fuel, fuel disposing. They, they decided to dispose fuel to just lessen the weight because uh, the, 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 the flight was fully loaded with people and luggage heading to Dubai and also loaded with fuel. Remember, when a plane is taking off, it, it, the amount of fuel is estimated for the amount of hours and also the destination. So it can't just come back instantly. So they had to dispose fuel within, I think, at the river. So they stayed in the air on the same route. So I can only imagine the panic in the, of the people in that plane and how they felt. I, was, I followed it up on GPS, but the good news is it came back, I think after one hour, or 45 minutes or so, and landed back safely and they had to fix, I think it was landing gear that was a problem. 
thanks to technology, you can see some of these things. Now you know. And then also we had leaking roof at the JKIA yeah, when it was, we, of course, we still continue to experience floods. And you don't expect an international airport, an entry to Kenya like the JKIA, to have a leaking roof. What if JKIA has a leaking roof? What is happening in Kibra? You know, I don't know if you're able to contrast that JKIA, Kibra, leaking roof. Where should, where should we talk about leaking roofs mostly? I'll leave that to you, okay? Right, uh, there's a story here that talks about farmers urged to form cooperative societies and especially in Kisi County where, <laughs> Kisi, <laughs> Sal, <laughs> all right, uh, cooperative societies enab to enable them bargain for prices for agricultural produce and products to boost uh, their earnings. This according to the Nandi uh, Deputy Governor Yolita Mitei. He said the societies will cut costs of middlemen who buy goods from the farmers cheaply and sell them at high prices elsewhere leaving the latter swall wallowing rather in poverty. The farmer CEO of Viking Yaboki appealed to envoys to market local produ products in the diaspora for the country to earn foreign exchange to boost the economy, okay? Right, uh, that's just part of that. And then an update on coffee. It talks about coffee growers call for elimination of brokers to access the global market. Uh, this again includes uh, farmers who added that the poor marketing of their produce, infiltration of the sector by insensitive brokers, uh, higher amounts paid in form of agent fees, among other challenges that have continued to see them receive low returns as cartels in the sector enjoy their toil. Led by Danson Kilonzo from the Machakos County, the farmers at the same time lamented that payment of farmers in shillings while in their coffee is sold in dollar currency. By the way, is a situation that has seen them work more in the farm but get less. This is like... You're putting in a lot of work and effort and then you're not getting the equal and uh, all right, getting an, uh, an equal reaction to the amount of effort and time you're investing in, which I feel like it's really unfair, so it needs to be checked. All right, uh, Kenya hopes again for duty-free access to the EU on trade deal, and this according to the European Union, is one of the Kenya's largest trading partners and most important export market bilateral trade between Kenya and the EU which is worth 3.3 billion pounds, uh, an estimation of 594 billion Kenya shillings. Kenya mainly exports veggies, flowers, and foods. On its part, the European Union exports minerals, chemicals, products, and machinery. So uh, there's a photo there of the president of, the, uh, of Kenya and the president of the EU Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, witnessing the signing of the Kenya-European Union Economic Partnership Agreement at State House in Nairobi. Okay, this will again just help Kenya to boost the economy and trade. Uh, lastly, oh, this, is, this is an international update. It talks about over 2,000 perish in a failed bid to cross the Mediterranean. This again is a story of immigrants. Uh, there's a story on uh, shares, Nairobi Securities Exchange, and they've, they've highlighted uh, the highs and the lows from the EGATS Limited to Williamson T Kenya PLC. But uh, have you realized we have a lot of tea farms in our country? And now that uh, we are trying to recover our economy. I think those are some of the local stories that are trending on uh, page number 17 and 16 of the People Daily. Maybe a last one down below. It talks about uh, the Kenya Maritime Authority boss making shipbuilding priority. It talks about importance of real-time tracking through registration and database that not be gainsaid. Uh, he said they're looking at ship breakings. Uh, he said they got a shipyard and they also want to build a shipbuilding to support services that will propel the shipbuilding industry and uh, probably they're welcoming new homes. And this again, this is an opportunity that will create jobs or job creation opportunity. So the, new uh, the newly appointed Director General said his focus is on empowering stakeholders to actively contribute to the job creation, which aims to invigorate the region's economic landscape. Among the transformative initiatives is the integration of water transport to alleviate congestion in traditional transport system, okay? So it's basically just aimed to boost the marine uh, services at the cost. Uh, right on the last uh, page of uh, the People Daily, uh, there's a highlight of Ebenyo Simi who sets a record time at the Tanta Steel in Kolkata, that is in India. Uh, he, uh, the selected results as well of the Tata Steel Kolkata 25 kilometer road race, right? Uh, 
He produced a superb last kick to set a new course record and win at the Tata Steel Cup County 25 kilometers, a World Athletics Elite Label a road la race in India on Sunday. Elite Label, not Label, right? In doing so, the 28 year old Ebonyo, who closed the finishing line with a time of one hour, 11 minutes and 30 se 13 seconds, was closely followed by Kenya's Victor Kipruto Togom, who also surpassed the previous event record with one hour, 12 minutes and 26 seconds, followed by Ethiopia's Tesfaya Demeke, who finished third with one hour, 13 minutes and 36, seven, 36 seconds, and two of the fastest 25 kilometer performances of all time. Those are just some of the uh, trending stories right here on the People Daily. But before we actually take a break, and then I'm going to be coming back in just a bit to tell you what move we're going to take next. There's a question of the day. Let me get it right. Let me get it a sample. Yeah, it's here. Uh, what's, one of, uh, what's one piece of advice you've received from this show since we began this year, right, that you've applied in your own entrepreneurship journey this year? What's one piece of advice you've received from our show that you've applied in your own entrepreneurship journey this year. I'm really interested to see and hear your feedback. I'll tell you one piece of advice, and this comes from one of the guests I got to interact with right here on Why in the Morning, especially today on Entrepreneurship Tuesday at Y254 channel, Facebook, Instagram, and X. The hashtag is Why in the Morning. And then also mine is at Brian Sakwano. And time for us to take a break. And we're going to be coming back with much more. Stick around.